What's going on guys? Tower number nine here, and today we are going to have another match from the Super Showdown Poznan tournament. This time we have Sarna on the left playing Chewbacca, and uh, I believe he's running Echo Base, the 30 HP green base, and on the right we have Rydal playing Boba Green with the classic ECL. Now, uh, just a disclaimer, I will probably pronounce some stuff wrong. Very possibly I already have pronounced some stuff wrong. My apologies to our, uh, my apologies to our listeners. I do not speak Polish. I am uh, not an expert in how these things are pronounced. And shout out also to the store uh, Sklad Gear, which I may have also mispronounced uh, for running this event and for hosting this footage. Um, this is footage from their YouTube channel, which I will link to in the video description below, uh, and I am adding my own commentary for the benefit of those who are interested in the strategies and so on in the games. So yeah, let's get into it. Um, and we are going to be at 1.25x uh, speed here. So, okay, Sarna versus Rydal. And um, in this case, you know, the players are... Uh, now, what is he doing there? Oh, he, okay, he had two groups of three. So the players are looking at the initial hands. Looks like Sarna uh, has the initiative and quickly decides to take a mulligan. Rydal, looking at the hand there, I do see a copy of Overwhelming Barrage as a prominent card in that hand. One of the uh, one of the overall strongest cards in the game, most likely. So you know, probably a good one to uh, probably a good one to see in your opening. Um, and. Did he resource it, though? I think he might have resourced an Overwhelming Barrage. Interesting. Normally not really something that you do, but maybe he was thinking it was too late game, or maybe he had reorganized the cards in hand a bit before doing that. Huh. We'll have to see how this goes. Sarna now uh, looking at the mulligan. Bridal taking a look at Chewie's ability there. Does Sarna even have a turn one play? I'm not sure that he does. Yeah, it looks like he just takes the initiative. Unfortunate. Uh, and Rydal leads off with Greedo. Now, Sarna does actually have a good counter to Greedo in that he can play Admiral Akbar and deal one damage when played, defeating Greedo immediately, which seems like it might be a pretty reasonable option under the circumstances. So he uses Chewie's ability to give the temporary Sentinel, and indeed uh, pings off Greedo with Akbar's ability. Ooh, Rydal tries for the top deck and does not hit a non-event, instead milling off what I think is a hyperspace copy of Darth Vader commanding the First Legion. Uh, not what you want to see there. Now, I do think that using Greedo's ability in that situation was correct. I think he just got a little unlucky. Um, in general, I would say that I think that you should be using uh, Greedo's ability when possible. Okay. So now... Um... And just, just for a little more clarity on why you should do that, uh, so Greedo's ability mills the top card of your deck, which is to say it discards it, and if that card is a non-unit, then you get to um, then you get to deal two damage to a ground unit, um, and that is, in my opinion, worth doing most of the time. Uh, okay, so Fleet Lieutenant uh, sends Admiral Akbar in for three damage to Boba. Uh, we see a Viper probe droid revealing the hand. So there's a Rogue Squadron Skirmisher, a I think that's a Bright Hope, Luke Skywalker Jedi Knight, and then I think a Vanquish. I couldn't entirely tell what that last card was. Um, probe droid also, of course, a 3-2. Shoot first, used to allow Boba to clear out the Fleet Lieutenant while not taking any damage. Now, Boba could have attacked Admiral Akbar. Or no, he couldn't have because Chewie's ability was used to make the fleet lieutenant a sentinel. That makes a lot of sense because that way Boba can't attack Akbar and just pick him off with the on attack ability. However, it does look like Sarna's control of the board is diminishing here with just a heavily damaged Admiral Akbar against Boba Disintegrator and a um, and a Viper Probe Droid, which is an unfavorable uh, unfavorable situation in the ground arena. Um, let's see whether or not he can turn it around, though. Neither player has taken any damage on the base, which is probably good for Sarna, as his Chewy deck is likely going to be later game-oriented than a Boba build. Let's see what he does next. If he has another buff of some kind for Admiral Akbar, he could potentially take down uh, Boba or the 
or the probe droid if there were another fleet lieutenant for instance another option i think we saw a bright hope he could play the bright hope into the space arena and return admiral akbar to hand drawing a card um, that would provide major card advantage and it would prevent his admiral akbar from being easily defeated but it would leave him pretty vulnerable on the ground especially given that boba fett is uh the leader is going to deploy this turn in all likelihood you know we would then be looking at sarna probably taking 10 damage um, but he does opt to do that anyway, so we see the uh, Bright Hope retrieving Akbar and drawing an additional card, as well as putting a strong Sentinel into space. But now, just as I had uh, discussed, it seems that Rydal is pushing damage to Sarna's base. Um, so we're going to see Boba, Boba Disintegrator swings for three, Chewie's ability used, and sends in R2-D2 as a Sentinel. Nice. So that's going to at least stave off one attack, as well as letting him look at his top card and decide whether to leave it on top or uh, move it to the bottom of the deck. He leaves it on top of the deck. So Chewie's ability allows you to play a uh, unit that costs three or less and have it be a sentinel for the turn. It's not permanent, but at the very least, he's able to bring in this R2-D2 as a sentinel, and by that method, uh, prevent at least some some incoming damage, perhaps. Ooh, we see an overwhelming barrage, though, used to pick off Bright Hope. Then the Boba Fett buffed with the barrage takes out R2, and then the Viper Probe swings in for another 3. So th while that Bright Hope would have been very nice to have to counter a potential Fett's Fire Spray, at the very least heavily delaying it, that option isn't going to be available to Sarna with the Overwhelming Barrage shooting it down. I wonder if Rydal did that in preparation for a Fett's Fire Spray this turn, and I believe that is also a hyperspace copy of Overwhelming Barrage, which is a nice-looking card. I think the hyperspaces in this game look really good. Okay. Rogue Squadron Skirmisher flies in, takes down um takes down the Viper Probe Droid. I'm a little confused as to why the target was the Viper Probe Droid instead of Boba Disintegrator, who is better. Um Maybe he has an Agent Callus that he's gonna bring in later and he wants to pick off a unique unit at that time. I'm not entirely sure. Um he does retrieve the R2-D2 into hand, which will be a useful sentinel later on in the game, perhaps. And Chewie will get a chance to deploy next turn, which might mitigate some of this pressure in the ground arena. But the question is, is he taking too much damage before that happens? He has taken a substantial amount of damage. Rogue Squadron Skirmisher. 4-6 with Ambush, and when played, you may take a unit that costs 2 or less from your discard pile and return it to your hand. Uh, so quite efficient there. Um, not only takes out an enemy unit while remaining on the board, but also returning a card to hand that can potentially be used later, perhaps with Chewie's ability to put another temporary sentinel on the field and stall the opponent, or it could just be an easy resource. And we do see the Fett's Fire Spray in hand there for Rydal, so he could perhaps use that. Uh, to pressure the, uh, he could perhaps use that to put more pressure on the base. However, he ends up deciding to use Bosk to ambush the, um, Bosk ambushes the, uh, the Rogue Squadron Skirmisher and defeats it. One HP left on Bosk, then Boba swings in for four more damage to the base. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. I am mostly recovered now, but still coughing a little bit. Ooh, that Admiral Akbar that was retrieved by Bright Hope earlier makes his triumphant return, deploying with Chewie's ability as a Sentinel and defeating the 1 HP Bosk. Now uh, he's there to perhaps absorb some more damage here. I do think there's a good chance that we're going to see... Um, I do think there's a good chance that we're going to see Fett's Fire Spray take the field soon. Um, putting more pressure on in space. I do think I saw a Vanquish in Sarna's hand, which is an ideal counter to Fett's Fire Spray, but I believe he's at seven resources and has used three of them on Admiral Akbar, which means he is no longer uh, he no longer has the resources he would need to remove Fett's Fire Spray. Ooh, and Rydal does 
also have a Darth Vader commanding the first legion in hand, which is a unit that can uh, really gain an advantage here. Let's see how. Uh, let's see how he does. Boba. Uh, so Boba, the leader, used to defeat um, used to defeat Admiral Akbar there. Chewbacca could deploy this turn, and indeed he does. So Sarna puts Chewie on the field. Chewie is a 2-9 Sentinel with grit. Fett's fire spray now uh, taking to the skies. An upgrade for Chewie. Oh, an Electro Staff for Chewie. That is spicy. Plus 2, plus 2, and it debuffs enemy units attacking him. Bridal takes the initiative and then takes back that move to attack with... Uh, Fett's Fire Spray instead. R2 hits the field. Looks like the top card's Battlefield Marine, which gets sent to the bottom of the deck. And then we have Chewie defeating uh, Chewie defeating the unit Boba. Uh, with the initiative, Rattle will be able to swing in here for another, uh, for another 5 damage to base before that Vanquish can be played to remove his uh, Fett's Fire Spray. But Sarna now has a very strong presence in the ground arena. Chewie at this point can swing for, I think, seven damage. Ooh, it's a, it's a surprise strike in the space arena. Uh, so we are going to see surprise strike allows you to attack at plus three. Um, so that's eight total damage. Now the Vanquish comes out, defeating Fett's Fire Spray, but it's already done some major damage. Only three HP remaining on Sarna's base. Now, the extremely powerful Chewie here, uh, with some damage on him to enable Grit, and with the Electro Staff to debuff attackers, is an immense obstacle in the ground arena. What Rydal really wants to have here is another copy of Fett's Fire Spray, but I'm not sure that he has it. He looks like he has six resources also, which means that he can't play the Darth Vader commanding the first Legion that he had in hand. He just takes the initiative. Sarna considering his options here. It looked like he was going to play maybe a make an opening, but decides against it. Instead, just attacking into Bo... Okay, so he attacks first and then plays the make an opening. Oh, so I guess using that to take more damage on Chewie to charge Grit up more? That's interesting. Though I thought he had enough damage to already defeat Boba. Was I wrong? So he should have taken three, had two base for five, and then had the Electro Staff for two more. Maybe I'm misreading maybe I'm misreading something, but it seems to me that he should have had enough damage to already defeat Boba in one hit. So I'm not sure why he hit him and then Boba stayed on the field for the make an opening. I think he might have had to play the make an opening first. One upside of the make an opening is it does heal his base for two, which he desperately needs, but he's still in range to be defeated by one Fett's fire spray. Seven for Vader, ambushes Chewie, and is defeated, of course. So Vader swings in for five, which is enough to defeat Chewie here. If we had see the ma seen the make an opening played in the other order, Chewie would only have five damage on him and actually would live through this attack with the Electro Staff. So I think that that would have been a better option for Sarna, unless I'm misunderstanding the situation somehow, which is, of course, possible. Maybe it's, like, maybe it's an Entrenched or something? I thought it was an Electro Staff when we saw that card briefly earlier. Ooh, it's, um, okay, so yeah, it is a trait. I think it's a trait. Yeah. Yeah, and it was an Electro Staff. Okay, so I'm not sure what happened in that interaction with Boba, with Boba Leader. And it seems to me that Sarna perhaps could have done better by using the make an opening first, then only taking two damage, which would still have Chewie up to nine power and would put him in a position to survive against Vader. Uh, as at that point, he would have five damage on him, but six HP, as well as the damage reduction from Electro Staff. Um, Luke Skywalker Jedi Knight arrives and gives minus six, minus six to the defender that Vader brought in, destroying it through its shield. Um, and then we see an attack from R2-D2. Uh, two damage uh, has now been inflicted to Boba's base, both by R2-D2. Chewie with only 5 HP remaining, but Jedi Luke has Restore 3. So if Rydal doesn't find an answer to that Jedi Luke, uh, Chewie's base is going to start charging up, and uh, it will not be, as, uh, not be as favorable a scenario for our uh, Boba player as, uh, as it was earlier.
It's a very interesting situation. This could be a big comeback here for Sarna and his Chewbacca deck. Uh, if he can keep restoring his base HP, he does seem to have overall control right now. And I'm not sure that Rydal has a whole lot of endgame. The main thing that I think that he may be looking for at this point is just more copies of um, more copies of Fett's Fire Spray. So I think Rydal passes. Sarna attacks with attacks with Luke, inflicting some damage, and uh, and it heals his base also. So he now has 22 on his base, so 8 HP remaining. Rydal then plays Bosk, ambushing and defeating R2. Now in this situation. It'll be interesting to see what Sarna does in response. Oh, it's another Rogue Squadron Skirmisher. And the Rogue Squadron Skirmisher ambushes and defeats Bosk and returns R2 to hand yet again. That is a very solid play in this situation. Sarna, uh, Sarna plays Greedo. So if you're Rydal, what do you do here? So I think if you have a, um, I think if you have a make an opening, you use it to kill Greedo and heal your base further. And if you don't, you maybe just take initiative and attack into Greedo to clear him at the start of the next turn. You really don't want to give Greedo a chance to attack your base here. So I think it's either kill Greedo or take initiative. And he goes for the initiative. So perhaps he did not have make an opening, or if he did have it, maybe he's saving it in case one of those defenders comes out. This is a very interesting game. You know, normally Chewbacca is not considered a particularly strong leader, while Boba is considered perhaps one of the best, but Sarna has been playing this match well. Looking through his discard pile, I think because he has a home one. Yeah, there we go. Home one. So home one is a 7-7. Seven, seven. It has restore two. It gives all your other units restore one. And when played, you may return a um, you may return a heroism card uh, from your discard pile to, to play, but you have to pay for it, and the cost is reduced by three. So in this situation, what he did was he used um, he used home one to return Admiral Akbar and used Akbar's ability to kill Bosk. Rydal did hit the top deck. Uh, from Bosk to, or, or I'm sorry, to kill Greedo. He, uh, Rydal did hit Greedo's top deck, allowing him to defeat, uh, the damaged, allowing him to defeat the damaged copy of Rogue Squadron Skirmisher. Um, Sarna then used Chewie's ability to play R2 as a Sentinel. Uh, Rydal played a Crafty Smuggler and a Viper Probe Droid. Sarna ended up with the initiative. Uh, he uh, Sarna also used Waylay to remove Jedi Luke. We now see a fleet lieutenant used Admiral Akbar. Why he goes for the base? Very interesting. I would have assumed that he would go for to clear the units, but maybe he's seen his opening. Uh, he did use Chewie to give Sentinel to that uh, fleet lieutenant. Rydal finally uses Energy Conversion Lab, ambushing the fleet lieutenant with a um, ambushing the fleet lieutenant with a steadfast battalion and dealing two overwhelm. And now with the Sentinel cleared, does he? No, but he has the resources. He can replay Jedi Luke and use Jedi Luke to kill one of those ground units. Additionally, Sarna's Home One gives all his units restore one. Um, so he has uh, he has substantial ability to recover his base HP here. Let's see what play he goes for. It looks like he has some removal. So home one swings into the base for seven, healing uh, Sarna's base for two. Oh man, is he, he could just take the initiative here. Oh, a surprise strike into the base. Surprise strike into the base from the uh, from the Viper probe droid, inflicting six damage. Only four HP left on Sarna's base now. If there's another surprise strike, that if oh man, this is this is intense. Oh, well, what is he doing? If he plays Luke here, his opponent can take the initiative and win with the steadfast battalion, unless Luke kills the steadfast battalion. Um, if Sarna takes the initiative, though, and Rydal doesn't have another surprise strike, he can win with a single attack from his home one. This game is coming right down to the wire. Sarna has to decide what is worth or not worth the risk here. He goes for Luke. So if he, yeah, he goes for Luke and he kills the Steadfast Battalion. And that means that now if Rydal takes the initiative... So, yeah, so I think Rydal has to take the initiative and hope to draw another surprise strike. That's exactly what he does. 
Um, R2 hits the base and heals for one, so there's five HP left, but a surprise strike from Rydal would close the game. Now, interestingly, I think that if Sarna had just taken the initiative, he would have won here because his home one could have attacked and cleared the base, but he opted to play Luke to clear the Steadfast Battalion instead, which I think is a weaker play, because in the event that Rydal has the surprise strike, you lose the game anyway. Uh, what happens there? Handshake? Okay, so one player or the other conceded. It looks like Rydal is the one who conceded. So presumably he did not draw a surprise strike and he conceded the game, realizing that an attack from home one or Luke would end it. Good game by Sarna. I do think that he I do think that he took an unnecessary risk by playing Luke at the end. And so the reason that I say that is if we compare playing Luke to taking the initiative, uh if Rydal has a if Rydal has a surprise strike in hand, uh then taking the initiative loses the game. But if Rydal has a surprise strike in hand, uh, playing Luke also loses the game. And if Rydal does not have a surprise strike in hand, then playing Luke gives him the opportunity to draw two more cards, and if he draws into it, he wins the game. Whereas if you, um, whereas if you just take the initiative, then you deprive him of the opportunity to top deck. Now, he missed the top deck anyway, but I do think that might have been better. Um, I could I could be misunderstanding though. I think I think you know maybe there was also a maybe there was also a threat of like waylaying home one or something. I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but um, there could be some other factors that I'm not considering. But to me, it seemed like it might have been better for Sarna to take initiative compared to playing Jedi Luke there. Although I could be wrong. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd be interested to hear what you guys think in the comments. Sometimes taking initiative early can actually be a really good play in this game. All right. The players are shuffling up for round two. Now, that was a kind of long round one. I'm not sure how much time they have left in the matchup, but we'll see how this goes. Seems like we've been, this broadcast's been going, or this, uh, this video's been recording for... Let me take a look at my uh, recording software here. So it looks like it's been um, looks like it's been about 22 minutes, but it's at 1.25x speed, so it's been longer than that. So they may have used, yeah, I don't know. They they they've probably used more than a third of the round time, um, but perhaps less than half the round time. Not entirely sure. Also, not entirely sure what the round time was. They might have been playing with longer rounds here, but it is a two out of three. With Sarna having won the first round, if this game goes to time. Sarna will win the match. If Sarna wins this, he will, of course, also win the match. If Rydal wins this, I'm not sure they're going to be able to complete round three. Viper Probe Droid leads the way, uh, and now we see a... So it looks like... Bat, hang on, we're going to... Hang on, hang on, hang on. We're going to go back. We're going to go back. My apologies, viewers. I want to... Okay. Sorry for skipping around a bit, but but I want to I want to pause and show what the cards are in that uh, show what the cards are in that hand. Okay, so Viper Probe Droid revealing Sarna's hand. So he has Battlefield Marine, Consortium Star Viper, Bright Hope, and the Rogue Squadron Skirmisher. So presumably Battlefield Marine is his turn one play, Bright Hope is his turn two play, or I'm sorry, uh, Star Viper is his turn two play, Bright Hope is his turn three play, and he hopes to draw into a five cost or some other things that he can do before the Skirmisher comes out. Okay, so he plays the Battlefield Marine, giving it Sentinel with Chewie, not that that really does anything in this situation. Um, Rydal takes the initiative. I do think that giving your unit Sentinel with Chewy like that is a good habit, even in situations where it doesn't matter, because it means that you might be, um, you might be, uh, you know, more likely to remember it in the situation where it does matter. So the probe droid attacks into base now that the Sentinel's gone. I think it's likely that we'll see Sarna, um, no, it goes for the Consortium Star Viper, giving it, uh, and does give it, uh, Sentinel. A... Super Laser Technician hits the field, and uh, Sarna trades his Battlefield Marine into the Probe Droid, meaning the Super Laser Technician no longer has a potential target to attack. And if Sarna continues to play into the Space Arena by playing this Bright Hope here as his, uh, as his card this turn, he'll deprive that Super Laser Technician of a target, and likely mean that Bobo will not, in fact, get to deploy sooner. 
So I made a recent video on how to counter Super Laser Technician, and, and the first point that I discussed there is playing to the space arena, so this could be an opportunity for Sarna to take advantage of that counter. He swings in with a Consortium Star Viper for three. He does not benefit from Restore, though, um, because he does not have the initiative. I think Rydal actually passed there to try to uh, get a unit on the field or whatever uh, that he could attack into with the Super Laser Technician, but Sarna doesn't fall for it. He plays the Bright Hope, and uh, Rydal swings in for two, and then Sarna just takes the initiative. So good job by Sarna countering his opponent's Super Laser Technician by playing only to the Space Arena after trading away that uh, Battlefield Marine for the Viper Probe Droid. He has successfully blocked his opponent from getting to defeat the Super Laser Technician to get the temporary resource and bring Boba Fett out a turn soon, uh, earlier. So well played to Sarna there. Also, uh, because he was able to get the initiative, he... Then, uh, because he was able to get the initiative, he attacks with the Consortium Star Viper, and this time, uh, the Restore 2 is active, so he restores some of the damage that was inflicted on his base. Um, the Super Laser Technician swings into base, uh, Bright Hope hitting Rydal's base, Boba Fett now deployed. Is Rydal going to fire off an overwhelming barrage here? Is that what we're going to see? Kind of looks that way to me. Sarna still hasn't spent any resources this turn. It has six available. Four damage to base from Boba Fett. Interesting. If he does end up going for the overwhelming barrage, it would have been more advantageous. Oh, he... Okay. I guess Sarna passed, and then Rydal took the initiative. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Not entirely sure what happened there. We don't have audio, so I'm not sure. Not sure exactly what went on, but it seems like there was probably a pass and take the initiative, and neither player actually spending any resources that turn. Kind of an unusual circumstance, to say the least. So we are up to, I believe... Six resources for each player, so um, it'll still be another turn before Chewie can hit the field. And having taken the initiative, Rydal is now not uh, the Rydal has disabled the healing on his opponent's um, on his opponent's consortium Star Viper. Rogue Squadron Skirmisher arrives, hitting Boba for four and returning the Battlefield Marine from discard to hand. Overwhelming Barrage uh, on Boba Fett, six damage to give out here, so that's going to be two damage to defeat the uh, two damage to defeat the Skirmisher, three damage to defeat the Star Viper, and one damage to um, one damage to Bright Hope. I think it might have been advantageous for Sarna here to attack with with his Star Viper and perhaps other space units prior to um, prior to playing out that Skirmisher. Um, looks like a shoot first is played just for the bonus damage, a bit of an unusual play. Um, Boba hitting for seven total damage. Sometimes though, you know, maybe you just want to put more pressure on him. It looks like he already has a large number of cards in hand, so maybe he's thinking he'll already have efficient ways to spend his resources and so on without that shoot first. Um, now Chewie can deploy this turn, but first we see a takedown removing Boba Fett from the board. Two damage to base again. Uh, the super laser technician, while he has not been has not been successful at ramping uh, Rydal's resources at all, has at least done a fair chunk of damage to the base. Chewbacca now on the field. Sentinels in both ground and space for Sarna, with Chewie protecting the ground and Bright Hope the space arena. ECL is used. It's going to be Fett's Fire Spray, ambushing and defeating Bright Hope, and then readying with its ability. This is a very nice little trick you can use. Um, I have a I have a video uh, I have a video explaining this combo as well. But essentially, you can choose to resolve ambush before when played. So with Fett's fire spray and with the gorilla attack pod, if you ambush them with ECL or with Admiral Piet, you get to uh, resolve ambush so ready an attack and then resolve the when played to ready you afterwards, uh, which potentially allows you to get multiple uses out of your card in a turn. Uh, Chewie attacks and defeats Chewie attacks and defeats the super laser tech, but Fett's fire spray 
uses a um, Fett's Fire Spray uses a Surprise Strike to deal 8 HP to base, and Sarna only has 2 HP left. He needs some removal, so a takedown of Vanqu a takedown would kill Fett's Fire Spray here because it was damaged by Bright Hope. It looks like he does have a takedown. A Vanquish would also do the job. Opts for the takedown, though. Fett's Fire Spray off the board. He could really use some healing, though. Could really use some healing. Three resources for Rydal, and it is Boba Disintegrator, and Chewie is just off being able to defeat him. But attacks into him anyway. Odd. Huh. Maybe he doesn't have any upgrades or similar for Chewie. Maybe he's just trying to charge up Chewie's crit. Five for Bosk, who trades with Chewie. I don't really like attacking uh, with Chewie there. But yeah, so again, he plays the make an opening. I think that once again, I think he would have been better off if he had played the make an opening before attacking with Chewie to reduce the amount of damage that Chewie took from the attack. Because if he does make an opening first, then attacks, he would be able to live through an attack from Bosk. Um, however, he does get some healing from the make an opening at the very least, so base up to 4 HP. Um, we see a Cartel Spacer played, very ineffective in this situation, um, but still a unit that threatens an attack into the base, and if there's another Surprise Strike, could be a major issue. I think there's a good chance now that we're going to see a copy of, um, I think there's a good chance that we're going to see a copy of Home 1 played, and I'm right. And an additional one resource is spent to bring back Bright Hope. So the nice thing about Home 1, you don't have to have a 3 or less cost unit. In this case, I believe he spends for Home 1 and then brings back a 4 cost unit by play paying 1 extra, allowing him to put a Sentinel up in space. But now we see Vader commanding the 1st Legion deploying into the ground arena. Or I'm sorry, being played into the ground arena. No ambush target, but he fetches a Boba Disintegrator. So he now has a very major threat in the ground arena can sarna get something going in the ground arena that, that can stop vader and boba it'll be easy for him to put up at least one sentinel but i don't know if that will be enough let's see what sarna does here in a what i think is looking to be a critical turn he does have bright hope bright hope is covering him in the space arena so that cartel spacer is not a major threat but i think he needs to deploy a sentinel into the ground arena um, in order to ward off a potential attack from vader or boba if Rydal has a um a shoot first or a surprise strike he would actually be able to kill okay so it's admiral Akbar. Admiral Akbar arrives and deals one damage to Vader, but more importantly is a sentinel now. There's a no good to me dead in hand, exhausting the home one here for two turns. Very relevant play. I think he has seven resources, so in principle he could play Jedi Luke, which I think I saw in his hand earlier. Also has some events. If he attacks with his Bright Hope, it will heal his base for one, thanks to the home one. He maybe wants to wait and have Akbar get killed so that he can play Jedi Luke and give minus six, minus six? I'm not entirely sure, though. I think maybe you just play Takedown on Vader here? Or no, Vader has 6 HP, so he can't use Takedown on Vader, but maybe he has something else he can use. Oh, it's not a Takedown. I, I had the wrong card. It's a Vanquish, and he can Vanquish Vader. And now Boba doesn't actually have enough attack to clear Admiral Akbar. 6 resources, though. Change of Heart! Oh, what a play! Change of Heart taking control of Bright Hope. That could be game. 
Now there's four damage in the space arena that can attack into Sarna's base. Does he have it out? He doesn't. There's the handshake. Well played by Rydal. The change of heart, stealing the Sentinel and allowing him to get a win back in a situation where it looked like Sarna was getting control. They are now going on to game three of this match. And the question is, are they going to be able to complete it in time? Um... We're now at about 35 minutes on the recording, and we have been at 1.25x speed. So there should be a little bit more time, though I did do an intro, did do a pause. Um, you know, if we say there was about, I don't know, if we say there was like 30, you know, 33 minutes, 1.25x, you know, we're looking at, you know, maybe something like 39 minutes elapsed. So this could be like a 15, 16 minute game. Um 15 or 16 minutes left in the round could be interesting though we'll have to see what happens here this is an exciting uh this has been an exciting match i think that sarna is playing an unusual deck but he has in my opinion been playing it fairly well and now we're going to see now what is happening here what is he doing maybe some sideboarding is he putting away his deck what is he doing here Maybe they've ran out of time? Yeah, maybe they ran out of time and that was in extra times. So that game ends up being a tie, which is unfortunately a double loss. Um, it seemed like they should maybe have some time left, but I don't entirely know what the time control was. I'm, I'm sort of looking forward on the stream here. No, it looks like that's it for this match and Rydal was putting away his deck, so I guess they ran out of time. Unfortunate. That is one of the downsides of playing a deck that goes for the longer game right now. It seems like at least with the pace of play that is normal uh, in this game, people still thinking a lot about decisions, you're not necessarily going to consistently get three rounds in. I, I had thought they had a third round, though. I, I would have thought they would have had something in the something in the like 15 15 ish minute range to at least get going with the third round but I, I guess that was not the case or perhaps there's something else i'm missing if anyone familiar with the events of this tournament uh who knows what actually happened could let me know that'd be great because i'm i'm curious though but my suspicion is that perhaps they ran out of time um yeah let's see uh, yeah, I, I would have thought that they would have some time left, but um, but perhaps not. Um, perhaps there was, perhaps they already started some time into the round, or perhaps they just decided they weren't going to be able to get another round in, or perhaps even one of the players conceded. Yeah, I don't know. One way or another, there's two games there: one a win for Chewy and one a win for Boba. I like Sarna's uh, I like Sar Sarna's unconventional deck there. I thought it was cool. And uh, it'll be interesting to see if we see that in action uh, later on. It looks like maybe the next game of this stream is also going to involve Sarna. So, uh, you know, or perhaps Sarna is just a common name. Um, no, it looks like it's, it looks like, so, okay, sneak preview. I am not actually going to put this out as uh, part of this video. It's going to be, uh, this will be tomorrow's video. But we have uh, Sarna versus Hippo in the next round. So it looks like we are going to see some more Chewbacca gameplay this time against Han. All right, that's going to do it for this one, guys. Thanks to you all for watching, and we will be back later with some more Star Wars Unlimited content. I will catch you guys later.